in this session we are going to study the chemical structure of dna anti parallel nature of dna and we will also discuss about that why purine pairs with pyrimidine and the double helix model of dna and finally the different forms of the dna chemically speaking dna consists of three things to the sugar second is nitrogenous bases and the third is phosphates so one by one we will discuss about all these three things so let's first of all talk about sugar there are two forms of sugar one is deoxyribose sugar second is ribose sugar deoxyribose sugar occur in case of dna and ribose sugar occur in case of rna so first let's talk about deoxyribose sugar now deoxyribose sugar is a five carbon structure now oxygen is present between carbon number 1 and carbon number 4 as we can see in the diagram this is a carbon number 1 this is a carbon number 4 and oxygen base is present over there the most important thing in case of sugar is the positioning of the carbon number 2 at the carbon number 2 in case of deoxyribose sugar there is a one hydrogen and one hydroxyl whereas in case of ribose there are two hydroxyl group so it is the carbon number 2 which differentiate between deoxyribose sugar and the ribose sugar now let's talk about the nitrogenous bases now there are two types of nitrogenous bases one is the purine and second is the pyrimidine now purine is a nine membered double ring structure and in purine nitrogen is placed at a specific position these are the carbon number 1 the carbon number 3 the carbon number 7 and the carbon number 9 similarly in case of pyrimidine again it is a six membered single ring structure and here nitrogen is present at carbon number 1 and carbon number 3 let's talk about the different types of purine now there are two different types of purine that exist one is adenine and second is guanine now both adenine and guanine can be differentiated on the basis of the different functional group for instance in case of adenine the amino group is present at carbon number 6 as we can see there this is the amino group that is present at the carbon number 6 so chemically speaking adenine can be written as a 6 amino purine in case of guanine the amino group is present at the carbon number 2 and at carbon number 6 there is a keto group now let's talk about the pyrimidine are uh, three different types of pyrimidine one is cytosine thymine and uracil now in case of cytosine the amino group is present at carbon number 4 this is as per the modern nomenclature in the classical nomenclature the numbering is done like this 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so as per the classical nomenclature the carbon number at carbon number 6 amino group is present now thymine is very very special why because methyl group is present at carbon number 5 so thymine is a methylated nitrogen space and in case of uracil keto group is present at two positions one is carbon number 2 and another is carbon number 4 now phosphate phosphate unit is present either in the form of phosphate ion or phosphoric acid it is the phosphate which imparts acidic nature to the dna the lone pair of electron that is present in a phosphate is the reason behind the acidic nature of dna now let's talk about that how these three molecules together join and they form a dna molecule so we can study all these things in a step by step manner so let's discuss the very first step the first step is the formation of the nucleoside now the for the formation of the nucleoside sugar binds with a nitrogenous base and they form a nucleoside now as we can see in the diagram so this is the nitrogenous base and this nitrogenous base to bind at carbon number 1 of sugar so the structure formed is called as a nucleoside in a step 2 we will see the formation of nucleotide for the formation of a nucleotide one nucleoside binds with a phosphate group so nucleoside and phosphate together form nucleotide now here also 
the binding is very specific in the nature as we can see there that this is the nitrogenous base which were bonded to carbon number one but the phosphate group is bonded to the carbon number five in step three we will see the formation of a dinucleotide earlier we have seen the formation of mononucleotide so this is your the mononucleotide so the two mononucleotide join together and the moment mononucleotide join they form a dinucleotide structure so both this molecule join together with the help of these phosphodiester bond now the phosphodiester bond is formed between carbon number 3 and carbon number 5 of nucleotide as we can see there that this is the carbon number 3 and this is the carbon number 5 later on the polynucleotide is going to be formed for the formation of polynucleotide what will happen that the mononucleotide will keep on adding to the existing dinucleotide and this addition is going to occur with the help of phosphodiester bond so in this manner the chain keep on growing and as a result polynucleotide chain is going to be formed the important thing is that the chain has a two end one is five dash n second is three dash n these five dash and three dash is recognized on the basis of the free hydroxyl group at the carbon so this is the fifth carbon so that's why it is called as a five dash and this is the third carbon so that's why it is called as a three prime end finally the two polynucleotide chain join together and that joining is going to occur with the help of hydrogen bonding so the, the moment they join together complete dna molecule is going to be formed the important thing is that one chain is growing in 5 prime to 3 prime then another chain is growing in 3 prime to 5 prime the nature of hydrogen bond is also very specific adenine and thymine will form in between two hydrogen bonds and three hydrogen bonds will be formed between guanine and cytosine so this is how a complete dna molecule is going to be formed with the help of its three basic constituents that is sugar nitrogenous base and phosphate now dna strand is anti-parallel why it is anti-parallel because one chain is growing 5 prime to 3 prime and another chain is growing in 3 prime to 5 prime the chain grows in such a manner because it facilitate the formation of H bonding between the nitrogenous bases. So that is why we call DNA strand is anti-parallel. Now, why purine always pair with pyrimidine? The reason is that there is a fixed distance between the two strands of DNA, that is 20 angstrom. And this fixed distance is going to accommodate only a three ring structure. Now this three ring structure is possible only and only if a purine is going to pair with a pyrimidine. Suppose two pyrimidine joins, then the gap between two pyrimidine is too big to form a hydrogen bonding. So that's why the two pyrimidine cannot present in between the two strands. Similarly, if there is going to have a two purine, then it uh, going to be a too tight that there won't be any space for the formation of hydrogen bonding in between them. So that is why purine is always going to pair with a pyrimidine. Now let's conclude. So DNA structure consists of nitrogenous bases, sugar and phosphate. In DNA molecule, adenine pairs with thymine by two hydrogen bond. Guanine pairs with cytosine by three hydrogen bond. Adenine pairs with uracil in case of RNA. Adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine pairing occurs to satisfy the bonding configuration between the nucleotides. Now let's talk about Watson and Crick model. The moment we understood the chemical nature of DNA, now our task is to understand that in 3D sphere how these molecules are arranged, which is often explained through a model. From time to time different model has been given, but the most accepted model was given by Watson and Crick, which is popularly called as a double helix model. This model is based on two most important studies. These are the X-ray crystallographic studies of Wilson and Franklin and the chemical analysis of Chargeoff. So Chargeoff has done the chemical analysis of DNA and mind it that this particular rules is valid only for the linear DNA. It is not valid for the 
circular DNA of bacteria. So according to the charge of purine is always e equivalent to pyrimidine or mathematically speaking the amount of adenine is equal to the amount of thymine so the amount of guanine is equal to the amount of cytosine so if you uh, just uh, add up the LHS and RHS we can get A plus G is equal to T plus C or the ratio of adenine and guanine and thymine and cytosine is equal to 1 or K which is a constant and this K is specific for every species so this observation helps in fig figuring out the DNA double helix model. Now let's talk about the double helix model. This model was given for BDNA. BDNA is the most common form of DNA. Now in case of the double helix model, this sugar phosphate forms a backbone of DNA. So this is the sugar phosphate backbone. And in between these sugar phosphate backbone, the nitrogenous bases are actually present. Now the distance between these two bases is always fixed and that is a 20 angstrom which is also called as its diameter. The vertical height of one complete turn is equivalent to 34 angstrom. So if you talk about the vertical height we can take it like this. So this is the one complete vertical height and this vertical height is equivalent to 34 angstrom. The number of base pair in one third is equal to equivalent to 10. We can also count it down. So if you just count the number of base pair, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So altogether, 10 base pair is going to exist between one turn. So it is obvious that the distance between two consecutive base pair become 3.4 angstrom. Since the distance is 34, so 34 divided by 10, it makes a 3.4 angstrom. Now the angular displacement between two consecutive bases is 36 degree. Why? Because in one vertical distance, the DNA travels up to, up to a rotation of 360 degree. So if you divide 360 degree by 10, so we will get the angular displacement between two consecutive base pair that comes to 36 degree. Now have a look at this DNA. Now with the, in this DNA, we will try to understand the major and minor groove. In order to identify the major and minor groove, let's draw a line. If you draw a line besides a DNA like this, We will find that in some cases there is a minor divergence but in one cases there is a major divergence. So this minor divergence is actually called as a minor groove and this major is actually called as a major groove. So the distance between major and minor groove stands as 17 degree. Why? Because between two consecutive major or two consecutive minor groove, the distance is 34 angstrom. Now let's talk about the different forms of DNA. There are so many forms of DNA, but out of those, these three are the most common one. That is BDNA, ADNA and ZDNA. Now all these DNA are a 3D structure. But some of them are right-handed and some of them are left-handed. A and Z DNA are right-handed molecule, but Z DNA are left-handed molecule. The diameter of A DNA is 20 angstrom, whereas for uh, A DNA is 23 angstrom, and for Z DNA it is 18 angstrom. Now the surface of DNA is very very important. For uh, B DNA the surface is smooth. If we say the surface is smooth, it means that grooves are well differentiated. In case of ADNA, it is slightly smooth. It means that grooves are less differentiated. In case of ZDNA, the surface is rough. It means the grooves are not differentiated. So 
with the help of surface we can identify the very nature of the grooves in case of the dna the number of base pairs in case of b dna is 10 for a dna it is 11 and for z dna it is 12 the angular displacement for b dna is 36 degree very easy to calculate since the number of base pair in case of b dna is 10 and for one complete angle is 360 degree so 360 degree divided by 10 it makes 36 degree so is the case for a dna that is 360 degree divided by 11 and for z dna that is 360 degree divided by 12 mind it the minus notation over there it signify that z dna is a left handed molecule the repeating unit in case of b dna is a mononucleotide it means when the polynucleotide chain is green every time mononucleotide chain will bind and polynucleotide chain will grow the same thing is going to occur in case of a dna but in case of z dna it is the dinucleotide that is the repeating unit it means that first of all the two mono mononucleotide will join together to form dinucleotide and later on the two dinucleotides will join and they will form the polynucleotide so every time the when the addition is going to happen in case of that dna it is always and always in the form of dinucleotide so that is how the z dna differentiate in terms of b dna and a dna now do you find any difference between major and minor group of a and b dna i'm sure you can the grooves are well differentiated in case of b dna as you can see over here it is quite well differentiated whereas in case of a dna it is comparatively less differentiated if you see z dna in case of z dna the grooves are not differentiated all are almost of equal uh, shape so that is why we say that grooves are not at all differentiated in case of z dna